Hello friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide. And we are on July 29th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. And welcome to the Daily Do, giving you a quick space weather update, earthquakes, and as well, volcanoes. We're going to start out here looking at earthquakes as we just did recently have a sizable earthquake here. Philippines, 5.2. This is after some pretty deep action through the Banda Sea yesterday. Things have calmed down since the 6.6 .6 earthquake in the Kermadec Islands. Seen about 7 through the region today, ranging from 4.2 to 4.8. As well, minor activity going through Alaska today. Largest was a 4.8. Unalaska still, and as well, activity going across the United States. But we're going to go with an in-depth look here on the USGS because it definitely shows a lot more that is going on. We did have another rare earthquake here to report. Ohio, Willowick, Ohio at a 7-kilometer depth just south of Lake Erie. Activity through central U.S. as well, Renfro. Oklahoma, and as well, minor activity, normal region here, all across California State. Looking at about 120 earthquakes all around the state of California. As well, notable here, earthquake, Lake Tahoe, I do believe, Sutcliffe, Nevada, quakes in the lakes. Minor activity right up into Petrolia here, 3.0. was the largest through the region, 3.0. So no major swarms to talk about. Moving up into Alaska, minor ice quakes to report. And that's normal for this time of year as things start to freeze. And yeah, just recently here at uh, Iliolo, <laughs> yeah, Philippines, 10 kilometer depth, just west of Merida. Other than that, no major earthquakes to report. Still minor activity here through the Kermadec Islands. The largest being reported the 6.5. Well, oh, that's another one today, 29th. So that was early this morning, a 6.5 had run off Kermadec Islands. So that's what, three in the past 48 hours through the region, 6.3 and greater. We also did just recently have close to an M-class flare. Looking at Lasco 2, showing the most recent event and not Showing the whole thing just yet has not registered on SDO. You can see the minor activity ahead of time, plasma filament eruption, and then that large ring. We're still going to watch for the effects here. Backside event. It definitely did have an interruption here, maximum absorption. So there is a possibility for minor radio blackouts through these regions today, as it happened. South America and as well Tonga region, Kermadec Islands, up into Australia. That's a pretty strong zap. And that's, as I said, that was from a, close to an M-class solar flare, looking at the solar X-ray flux, you can see it's just under the M-class. And over the last couple of days, we've seen lots of B, C-class flares recently. Minor activity at that. Geomagnetic activity, slightly elevated, but we were. KP index at four last night. Right now, the real-time solar wind, I believe we're sitting at about 500 kilometers per second. 
quick look here. So yeah, we're sitting at 543 kilometers per second. And that jumped up this morning as it was hovering around 450. Density rising as well throughout the day. Have a quick look at our sun the last 48 hours. So C-class flare event the other day right there. And then just recently, I'm not sure if it was front or back because ISWA isn't even uh, updating its space prediction just yet for the event. You can see in the southern region, we had some plasma filament erup erupting. And as well right here, you see something leave the sun right there. Something took off from the sun there, bit of plasma. I'll get a closer look at it here. Or maybe we won't. All of a sudden it has disappeared. Alrighty then. Yeah, just as I wanted to show you what I saw, you saw it yourself. What's going on here? Come on, SDO. Here we go. Alright, let's get this out of here. Let's get a closer look at the last 48 hours on our sun. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. This is a bit of a different laid back daily do. Chilling here in the live stream. And right now we've got Melody and Huru, part of the Do crew, in there chatting it up. Monitoring our planet, keeping an eye on space weather events, earthquakes, and as well all disaster alerts as they happen. The last 48 hours on our sun has been pretty active to say the least, reporting just under an M-class flare. And in the last 48 hours we've seen about four B and C-class flares coming from our sun. Solar maximum definitely is alive and well. Looking at a pretty active cresting region here. Oh, Dean's in here too. Hello. How you doing, Dean? Amazing times to be alive, everybody. We got to be grateful. And I am truly grateful to have all of you tuning in, inviting me into your living rooms with your family, keeping an eye on our planet, monitoring together in the community, daily events worldwide. All right, let's get rid of this here. So that's our update, everybody. We're also going to give you a quick weather update as you got that big nor'easter heading up the eastern seaboard in which there was a forecast video about it. Looking at real-time wind over the region right now, all the strongest winds are through Maine and they're going to be moving northeastward right over Nova Scotia, Sydney, and into Newfoundland. Lots of rain associated with this storm as well. So there's lots of snow on the west and on the back side of the storm going to be a lot of moisture coming out of the Atlantic here. Very strong system. Let's just give a quick fast forward here as it runs into Monday. You can see it finally leaves the Atlantic provinces on Monday. Heading into Greenland still. So this big nor'easter is still on its way to Greenland as forecasted the other day. Also I wanted to give you an updated uh, forecast here for <coughs> Cyclone Bitsari. Bitsurai. There we go. Cyclone Bitsurai as it heads west and then the jots southwest. And it looks like it's going to miss Port Louis and St. Denis now. See how things can change. But that's why if you stay aware, prepared with daily events worldwide each day, 
you'll be getting the most accurate forecast. So looking at the system here into Thursday. Oh, it's still going to dance around a bit there. It looks like it may give a glancing blow to St. Denis as it heads southward along the shores of Madagascar. Most likely will be a Category 3, if not 4, cyclone by the time it hits Madagascar, so heads up, Madagascar. And you've got another one here developing in the long range, and yet another one here developing uh, northwest of Australia. Continuing low forecasted here for the next few days, coming through a lot. Australia again, trapped. Looks like you won't be getting dry until about, uh, let's say, Monday. No rain. Tuesday, maybe. Big cold front moving in southwestern parts of Australia. And then, yeah, not much has changed since the, yesterday's update. No major weather systems heading our way. Wednesday into Thursday for Ontario. Do have a low-pressure system. Alberta Clipper, thank you very much. Yeah, we'll be getting probably about 8 to 10 inches of snow, possible 15 centimeters. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the daily events worldwide, to the Daily Do, keeping you an update on our world and everything that's affecting it. We'll be giving you a, another volcano activity report coming here the end of the month for week four so stay tuned for that much love everybody thanks for watching stay aware and prepared stay young and have fun and get your daily due bye-bye now